Hello everyone and welcome back to Willow's Notes. Today's topic for our question of the day is osmosis. So as always, pause the video, try to answer the question, and then hit play so that we go over the answers together. Let's start by reading the question. You place one molar sucrose solution in both chambers A and B of a U-shaped tube. The chambers are separated by a semi-permeable membrane that is permeable to water but not sucrose. So the membrane that is separating A and B allows water to move through but not sucrose. What should you do to increase the net rate of the movement of water from A to B? We have four choices. So out of those four choices, which one will lead to more movement of water in the direction of A to B? Before we answer this question, let's go over some concepts. Let's start with the case of having pure water with no added solutes on one side and a sucrose solution on the other side. We already covered in a previous video that water molecules are polar. And because they're polar, they attract the solute through hydrogen bonds and create hydration shells around the solute, as you can see here in the image. The more concentrated a solution is, meaning the more solutes there are, the less free water molecules there will be because the water molecules are busy forming hydration shells. While on the pure water side, all the water molecules are free and therefore osmosis, which is the diffusion of water through the membrane, will take place in the direction from low solute to high solute. A lot of my students confuse and ask how come water is diffusing, there's no energy required, it's a passive transport, and yet it's moving from low concentration to high concentration. What you need to realize is that it's not the solute, okay, which in this case is the sucrose, that is diffusing. The water molecules are the ones that are diffusing. And the free water molecules on this side are far more than on the side with the solute. So think of it as movement of free water molecules. The more solute you add, the less free molecules you'll have. And of course, as water diffuses to the right, the level of the water will rise in this chamber and it will drop in the other chamber. Once you understand that water will always diffuse from an area of low solute to high solute, you can apply it to any scenario. Here we can see equal concentrations on both sides. This is the case in the question itself where both chambers have one molar sucrose solutions. Because both sides have equal concentrations, then both sides have equal number of free water molecules. Does this mean that no water will diffuse? No. Water molecules are constantly in motion. They're always moving. So they will move to the right, to the left, but the net movement will be zero. And the level of the water will not rise on either side. What would happen if we increase the concentration on one side? That was one of the options in the question. Let's say this side is still one molar sucrose. And on this side, we add three molar sucrose solution. We agreed that the more solutes, the more hydration shells, and hence the less free water molecules. So the net movement of water will be in this direction from low solute to high solute. Therefore, the correct answer is choice D, adding more sucrose in chamber B. So the key takeaway from this question is if you want to increase the rate of movement of water from A to B, then you add more solutes to be. And this is it for today's video. 
If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments section and I will see you in the next one. Bye.